Welcome back everyone for our second matchup of our back-to-back -back games here at the North Athletic Complex between the IEP Crimson Hawks women's team and the Robert Morris University Colonials. Now with me to the side, Alex Ganny and my boss, the one whose car almost got hit in last game from the soccer ball. But uh, now he's here and he's on the mic with me, Alex. Welcome. Well, it's a pleasure to be here once again. You know, I try and make sure uh, we have everything function the way it should be. Uh, having a ball hit my car would not have fit into that plan, but you know, life moves on. But we're out here on a beautiful sunny Saturday afternoon for some women's club soccer. First time that we've been able to stream them yep. at any point in time, just like the men's uh, game about two hours ago. A lot of firsts coming to our program this year with men's soccer and club so er, women's soccer out here on the fields. And then later in the, uh, in the spring months, we get to do some baseball possibly as well. You bet. It might even be sooner. Supposedly, uh, Coach David Williams was telling me they have a home series against Duquesne October 1st and 2nd. Uh, we'll have to see if we can figure out our power situation by then. But... You know, that is uh, still a few weeks away, but that is even getting ahead of ourselves now as it looks like we're getting pretty close to game time here. Both teams have finished warming up and are in their kind of final team huddles before we get going for some NURSA club soccer action. To recap, last game to anyone that wasn't watching, the RMU Colonials defeated the Duquesne Dukes men's team 2-1 to one off a penalty kick goal in about the 80-minute mark from Colin Guarini. So RMU 1-0 on the day so far in club action. As we said, the first club action that we've had for the 22-23 academic school year, and it's been off to a great start so far. Yeah, it really has. It's uh, Everything's kind of fit into place now. You know, the first couple of weeks coming back are always pretty hectic, but now everyone's kind of settled in. Two weeks of classes under their belt. Finally getting back to the club sports streaming here, Caden, and, uh, you know, it doesn't get much better than this. We got soccer this week, and we got soccer next weekend. And then so it's ramping up from there. We got hockey on the, on the bridge here, D1. The new D2 women's team also making their debut at the end of the uh, of the month in September. Some club action there. You bet, not to mention men's club rugby and women's mm -hmm. club rugby both coming up around early October. It looks like both teams will be taking the field here. Caden, uh, who are some of the, the people on this RMU squad we should really be keeping an eye on? Definitely gotta look at both the captains. The seniors, number 10, Sarah Baca, and number 12, Megan McClements. Both midfielders, both seniors, and both leaders on this team. And I mean, you can't look no further than the two captains and two seniors of this team. They've been there. They've been around. They know how to lead this team. And if you're going to look for someone to get going early, it's going to be the captains. You bet. And they're going to need to get going early because, admittedly, this team was not very good last year. They really struggled out of the gate. Because, you know, it always takes time to build chemistry with new teammates, and that was something that really hurt this RMU women's team last year. They're hoping to get off to a better start this year. But we'll, uh, we'll see what this year brings. And it looks like both teams are getting set just about ready to start with the opening kickoff. As you mentioned, a young team, seven sophomores and six freshmen alone on this team. Very young and very, just kind of get used to everybody. And both sophomores all coming back as well. A little bit of chemistry built adding into the freshmen. Yeah, you bet. Alrighty, they're in the box here and now it's just a waiting on the referee. And here we go. Another 40 minutes of club soccer action starting off here in the opening half. IUP is going to gain possession here in their defensive zone. Pressured hard from RMU's number 10, Sarah Baca, one of the midfielders, captains we talked about in the opening. IUP working along the line. RMU trying to keep that one in. Close to being out. Ref didn't see it. RMU gets a lucky call there. Yeah, that one was right on the line. I thought that was about to be out, but they're saying it's staying in, and we play on. IUP playing it back. Pressured hard from RMU. That ball gets sent into the zone. And now it's a battle between two to get it, and it's going to roll its way out of bounds. And it'll be RMU's possession. Yeah, both teams still trying to feel each other out here a little bit in the opening minute or two here, trying to figure out exactly what both sides are going to bring to the table. As uh, a bit of a body check there coming in from uh, from number 11, Emily Bailey. Bailey looking like uh, one of the players rum from last game, number three, a freshman. That took a couple, couple shots, I'd say, during the game. And definitely the physicality is starting to ramp up early. Yeah, and we see our first action here from the goaltender on uh, this team, Maddie Burns, as he collects that loose ball and fires it back toward midfield. IUP working their way downfield here. Apologize for some of the IUP players do not have numbers, so we'll try our best as we go along throughout the game. Is that one still along the line here towards midfield? RMU trying to get back in the offensive zone. Playing it back to the defensive side. Picked up there by number 13 in blue, off number 15. RMU working their way up. 
Colonials on the attack now, trying to get something going in a little bit of a counterattack game there after IUP held on to it for about a minute or so as they're trying to get across midfield and having a bit of trouble doing so as that is Baca on the ball. Just still trying to feel each other out, it seems like, as Baca sends it over to the right side, picked up by IUP to send it right back into play. Picked up by number 20, Julie Hay, one of the freshmen that we mentioned in the opener as well. It's a young squad now picked up by the netminder, Matty Barnes. Picked up by number 25 in red. Sending it, and it's now Burns comes out to collect that ball and regroup for the Colonials. IUP with a few early chances. Now IUP picks that loose ball up, and Burns is going to kick that one away. That could have been real costly there, a turnover right around the 18-yard mark. Uh, as that one's going to find its way back to Burns again. All of a sudden, a little bit of activity there on the RMU side. A couple of uh, nothing super dangerous just yet, but uh, they were certainly tempting fate there for a moment. Burns skies that one towards midfield. IUP collects it, now retrieved now by the Colonials, number eight, Emma Cantwell. Over to number 10, Sarah Baca, the leader, captain, midfielder. Sends it toward the middle to McClymans. IUP met them right there. Picked up by number 15 on the defensive side for RMU. Goes over to number five, now Shook. Shock sends it through. Towards midfield, IUP regains possession yet again. Fired through, cross kick, IUP with another chance as now Burns comes out of her net again to collect that ball. IUP has been swarming in the offensive zone so far. Yeah, the Colonials have been doing about all they can right now just to keep them from any real dangerous opportunities, but they have not had much time really on the attack so far in this opening half. They're really, I think, kind of have to settle into sort of a counter-attacking sort of attack where they only have to wait for their openings and then try and catch like an odd man advantage here or there as opposed to just brute forcing it the way IUP has to the opening minutes. Picked up now by number seven, Rio Strassneider. Working her way through the zone. Picked up by now by number 11, Emily Bailey. Bailey working her way around one, pulls back through the middle, finds number seven, Strassneider. Back to number 12, McClymans. Shot, it's gonna sail just wide, now it's a race for the ball. Number I'm gonna say Genaway is gonna get there in time and hold that one in. Nearly found Baca in front, but instead it's going to be cleared away by the IUP Crimson Hawks. It's a good chance there. Now McClyman's on the chase to try to get this ball back. IUP coming back the other way at number 17 in red. That's going to be, I think, Hoskins, if the name's right. As the Crimson Hawks charging up on the attack here, they've got three players forward to the Colonials, four on defense. There's number 20 in blue. Is They're going to blow that one dead. It'll be RMU ball off of a throw-in most likely here from the corner. Yeah, deep in their own zone here, but they'll be the ones to take possession of it. IUP kind of backing off now, realizing maybe they should play a little more up as that one is up and back into play. Julie Hay on the throw-in, the freshman. Still has possession of the ball here. She takes a tumble as she tries to play that ball forward. RMU charging ahead now. Good little pullback move by number eight, Cantwell. RMU's gonna send it the length of the field. The chase is on, and IUP's netminder is going to come out and play that for the Alianea. Yeah, they were looking for Genaway on a, a one-on-two opportunity with the pass uh, too far and too wide to get on the end of it. Through midfield, IUP regains possessions and just throws it down. Here's a chance the other way for IUP. All alone, number 23 back for RMU. Shot, and that one's going to go in. IUP strikes first early in this one. one nothing, Crimson Hawks. Unfortunately, we don't have a number, so we don't know exactly who put that one in the back of the net. We can only uh, we can only guess, unfortunately, but that is going to be a goal for the Crimson Hawks as they uh, draw first blood here in this contest. Just looking through, I, I believe it might have been Alexa Leonetti. Not 100% positive on that one, but possibly who we're going to give credit to the goal here. Until we are told otherwise, yes. that's what we're going to do. That's, uh, we have a few names on a starting lineup for IUP, and that's the name that looked like it matched the position, but we're not entirely sure. Try the best we can here with the information we're given, and also they, they don't have numbers as well for now. Moving forward, they most likely will, but early in the season still for everybody. Absolutely. Sometimes the jersey orders just get a little delayed here or there. But we still have uh, plenty of soccer that's actively happening still to talk about here, Caden. Yeah, Julie Hay right there trying to defend for the Colonials. IUP sends that one soaring back in past the Colonial bench. On the chase to Straw Snyder, number seven in blue. And it's going to be a throw in for the Colonials. Hits their number 20, Julie Hay, again. Hay working the ball up, sends it towards midfield. 
IUP is going to pick that one up. Works its way towards the Crimson Hawk bench, and it'll be Colonial Ball at midfield. One of the rare opportunities they're going to have a throw in from the IUP side as most of this half has been spent in the Colonial zone end. The throw in. Looking now for number 11, Bailey. Bailey throws it back to the defensive side. IUP is going to pick that one off and go the other way. Good move there from number 26 in red to throw that one down. Now the chase is on. Number 15 in blue back to get it for the Colonials. IUP sends it towards the crease, and the netminder bar Burns is going to come out and hold that one. Get a little bit of stoppage of plays. RMU looks to regroup in the defensive zone. Yeah, they're going to have to find a way to break through midfield here. They've been really struggling to generate some offense in the early going, as that one is going to go off of IUP right at the midfield line. Looks like it'll be Colonial throw in just past the midway field point here. To number 10, Sarah Baca, one of the captains, is going to hold on to this one. That's a couple substitutions for both sides are being made. Referee holding off, and Baca is ready to go. Throws it in to number 11, Bailey. Bailey pressured hard by two Crimson Hawks. Throws it back to the captain, Baca. Through the middle, tried to go from McClymans. Ends up on the foot of number five, Genaway. Makes a move around one. Working her way towards the middle, taken away by the Crimson Hawks. Down to help with the pressure is Bailey. First little bit of sustained pressure here, and right as I said, it's going to be a throw in for the Crimson Hawks. <laughs> As Bailey applied the pressure, three or four Colonials all in one area, keeping that movement going. Just ended up out of play. Kicked in now by the Colonials, ends up on the foot again of Bailey. One of the defensive midfielders, freshman. Bailey fires towards the net, bouncing ball, taken away by the Crimson Hawks. One of the first good opportunities so far in the game for the Colonials is that ball's going to bounce towards the cars again. Luckily, Alex, your car's not there anymore. Not anymore. I moved it after uh, halftime of the first game here. Yeah, they were looking for that crossing over the middle to Cantwell, who just was a little behind it, but definitely one of the, the more quality opportunities the Colonials have had. As they've started to put on a little bit of pressure here, a little bit of sustained pressure, I should say. McClyman's trying to go through the middle, find the foot of Cantwell. IUP is going to run this one down. And now picked up by number 20 in blue. It's Hay again into the offensive zone. It's going to be marked as RMU ball here. I think a deep th No, it's going to go as a corner kick. My apologies. Not a corner. Uh, goal kick. My apologies. Goal kick for the Crimson Hawks. Off the foot of number 10. That is Abby Bert Berthold, one of the captains for the Crimson Hawks, to kick this one away. Berthold through the middle. Bouncing ball here. 23 in blue, Milanovic. Back to defend. Also back there, number 20, Hay. Towards midfield, IUP is just going to send it right back in. RMU is going to make a couple substitutions here. About looks like about five. It's almost yeah. the whole bench. I'm about to say the entire bench just got up and took to the field here for the Colonials. I guess uh, I'm pretty sure the Nursa doesn't have any restrictions on how many subs you can make, unlike some of the like the professional leagues. Exactly. But uh, that's definitely good, especially as I believe they may have subbed off Julia. Uh, of which, not a bad call given that she's already been doing sprints up and down the field. She's been really busy from that right back spot. Good to see from the freshman they get early into the plays. Absolutely. She hasn't been bad. I, I want to specify she's been quite good in that yes, position. Yes. She's just been up and down the field quite a bit. As Running Burns, out of her. we'll pump that away. <laughs> Came bolting out of her crease, seeing that she did not have the advantage there. As also Maya Pozovic, one of the freshmen, or excuse me, sophomore defenders, kicks that one. Out towards the IUP bench as IUP is trying to settle this one down. Yeah, they're looking for uh, Bonavito, but they couldn't quite get it to her. RMU puts it back towards midfield. Picked up there by McClymans. Moves it forward. Finds number 16 in blue. Cross kick. Intercepted by IUP. They look to try to settle this one down as McClymans takes a combo, and that's going to get called. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty fair call. I mean, that was that was pretty on body with no real chance of getting to the ball. Good no call on a card, but definitely yep. worth blowing the whistle. As uh, I tell you what, they keep leaving number 16 for the Colonials, Cassidy Mislin, kind of wide open. They just covered her now, but she was wide open when she received that ball a moment ago to send in that cross. And the kick goes wide to the goalkeeper, and they're going to swallow that one up and hold on and reset here for the Colon or for IUP. Yeah, they were looking to get, uh, get that free kick over to someone on the right wing. I couldn't quite tell who because the ball was a bit too far. Uh, not a bad idea, just the execution wasn't quite there on that one. 
Ball bouncing towards number 16 in blue. Working her way upfield. Throws it towards the side here. Cassidy Misslin. Pressured hard here by number four in blue. Colonials on the retreat here, able to pick it up for the moment, but IUP reclaims it. Abby Kinney is the one applying pressure there, 25. IUP trying to settle the ball down. Towards the line, pressured hard. And it'll be IUP ball off a throw in. Looks like it hit off the foot maybe of number 15. Yeah, and they're going to be throwing this in right in front of the what I'll call the broadcast booth here, which is just the right half of the table here. Yep. <laughs> Throw in off the legs, gained again. So now McClymans is going to send this one out in play. It's now a battle for the ball. Good header there, number five, Shuck. Battling for the ball still. Maya Pozviak. Header there as the ball is going to bounce its way out, and it'll be an IEP throw it. And we'll chuck it in deep to the zone. Colonials have to really hustle to get back to it. Triple teamed in the corner. <laughs> throw it in front, good takeaway there. From number 25, Kenny again, one of the defensive midfielders. Some good move there from IUP working to the outside. Throws it down, out of play, it'll go. And that is going to be a goal kick. Matty Burns able to either punt or, I guess, lightly tap this one out of the zone, depending. Or are they marking it a corner? No, never mind. Corner kick, and it went corner. off the Colonials. Wow. I thought that went off of IUP. I've been really bad, I guess, with figuring out what's happening on these baselines here today. It's kind of <laughs> hard to see, honestly, from where our angle is. Yeah, we don't have a ton of elevation over here, but even still, it looks like it's going to be a corner here. Number four for IUP is going to be the one to, to launch it back into play. Anastasia Pinchak, the one with the corner kick. Throws in off a couple people. Works its way outside the crease. Picked up IUP again. It was a really nice cross, but no one could really get on the end of it. It was more of a shoulder than anything else. Abby Berthold picks it up, the captain for the Crimson Hawks. Working your way in, shot, and goes just wide of Burns. Good job by her to just let that one go. Yeah, I tell you what, if I was in that position, I definitely would have just dove for it because I am really bad at knowing where my posts are if I'm a goaltender. But that was a really good awareness there not to chase something she didn't need to. Burns is going to walk her way towards the crease. Back there she also has my Pozbiak. One of her defenders. Maddie's going to take her time here. She's going to kick it over to number 16 in blue. Also, there is McClyman's IUP is going to take the ball right back, though. Yeah, we're sitting here probably nearing the halfway point of the first half here. Crimson Hawks still lead one to nothing. Both teams have had a couple of chances, but I would definitely say IUP's had the more dangerous chances thus far. IUP, of course, leading on the score sheet as well, one nothing with a very early goal on their part as IUP working their way in, and it's going to go out of bounds. Looks like possible RMU throw, or it'll be an IUP throw in my mistake. Possibly off the foot there at the last second, the referee caught it. We haven't seen any go into the woods yet, unlike the men's game. That's no, we, earlier. for the first half, we, we didn't see any. For the second half, we had about four or five. We'll have to keep a running tally again to see if uh, too many more ends up in the in the woods. IUP shot, good block there from the Colonials. Just now they're just going to send this one away. IUP with a good block to keep possession. Battling there's number seven in blue, Rio Strassneider. Lost a bit of a footing, but was able to get back up and help keep pushing that ball forward. Wasn't for much though, as it came right back in the zone, and we'll see what the uh, the ref calls here. Given that Burns is the one chasing after it, I'm guessing likely going to be a goal kick, and I think for once I'm going to get this right. And it is confirmed it is a goal kick. Let's go. I'm one for three now. 33% <laughs> is not that bad. Uh, it's pretty bad, but hopefully <laughs> I get some more of these right in the second half of the game. As Burns is going to kick this one away. And sent there, met by a couple Crimson Hawks as they regain possession of the ball. McClymans on the attack here. IUP working to the outside. Intercepted there by number four, Pozviak. Sends it towards midfield. Picked up by number six, Bella Bunaveto. One of the other freshmen we on this team. Very young team. IUP. Sends this one towards us. And it's going to bounce its way. IUP is going to settle this one down. Army is going to kick it away. 
I was sitting here, I was wondering if someone was going to pop it up. I was going to be afraid for the camera that's sitting right in front of us here. Luckily, it is spared to live another day. For now. <laughs> for now. We still, we still have a bit to go in this game. Can't call anything out with the camera, especially since uh, we had the camera drop before production of this game as well. So it's already been through a little bit. Yeah, which, you know, far from ideal, given we don't have a ton of money to replace that. <laughs> but neither here nor there as it lives to fight another day. And here comes the Colonials on a counterattack here. It looks like a little three-on-four attack here is uh, Straw Snyder leading it down the wing, trying to cross it back in, nowhere really to go with it. And looks like it'll stay Colonial ball, I believe. It's now substitutions for both sides. Almost the whole bench for the Colonials, except for two. They have about six or seven subs combined on that side of the field. Yeah, when you're able to rotate players like that, it might mess with the chemistry of the team a little bit, but it does a really good job of keeping people rested. Exactly. Keep your stamina up, and as we see some of the captains, I believe, wake their way off the field for a well-deserved break because they, they've gone nonstop so far this game. You bet. They've been pretty busy. It looks like we're going to get a goal kick from IUP to get this one going once again. It's the kick. Intercepted by RMU to keep that one in towards the line. IUP is going to chase this one down. And it is going to stay in bounds, rolled off a couple feet. It's like it's going to be a throw in uh, for the Colonials here, deep into the IUPN, one of the few times they've been here. As the Colonials come charging into the box, taken down, no call. Close call there, but nothing from the referee. Towards the middle, RMU trying to get some open space. Back to the defensive side, shot. Rolls its way towards the crease, and they're going to keep that one in. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was intended to be a shot or a pass to, uh, I think it was Sarah Baca down by the uh, the net mouth there. Either way, kind of a missed chance going by the wayside for the Colonials, but they're already on the attack once again. Pozviak made a couple little moves there to get that ball into open space. A header there from IUP's number 26, Rachel Gwynn, to keep that one alive for the Crimson Hawks. Robert Morrison midfield now. Both teams exchanging back and forth kicks. IUP with a nice little up shot there to keep the ball to themselves. Colonials got to get back. They were seriously under uh, outnumbered for a second there. At one point it was a three on one for the Crimson Hawks, but they're able to retreat and regain the defensive line. There's a couple of shoves along the side here. Nothing called from number 14 in blue, Julia Gleason. Yeah, the refs have been pretty good about letting them play, both in the, the men's game before this and in the women's mm -hmm. game here, which is it has been nice to see, really. Let them do what they need to and then only call them out if it's something egregious. Exactly. A couple of falls here and there, but nothing nothing the ref side to say. We need to stop the play over this one. Yeah. That's a good intercept there from Sarah Baca. Or I'm sorry, number 20, Julie Hay. Back in the play here. Here comes Cantwell charging up the left side. Cantwell works through Makes the middle. one miss. Passes it over the Baca. Baca charging down, tried to go for Caldwell just in front of her. She races this one down. If she slides and knocks that one away, takes down a Crimson Hawk, nothing there, and that ball's going to roll out of play. Yeah, that was a perfect slide tackle there. That was all ball. But, and I wouldn't say necessarily a flop because there was contact with the foot yeah. afterwards, but you got to make contact with the ball first, and she did 100%. Looks like it'll still be a goal kick here from the Crimson Hawks. They send this one towards... Midfield, picked up now by number 25 in red. Sends it towards the other side of the field. is going to put this one right back into play. On the chase is Cantwell. Picked up by the IUP goalie once again. RMU starting to kind of get some more of that long ball game going, trying to really stretch the IUP defensive line. Nothing's come of it yet, but you only need it to work once to make something magical happen. Throw it back towards Burns was number 20. Hey. As that ball gets sent towards the Colonial bench, and it's going to roll out. That was about as much as Burns could do in that situation. Had the IUP four uh, bearing down on her and just had to get it away from the net and would definitely prefer getting it out to the sideline as opposed to off the baseline. Exactly. Bailey on the pressure. IUP still has possession of the ball here. Working their way in is the Crimson Hawks. They have three people up front. As that one's kicked away by the Colonials off the foot of Jocelyn Hansen. IUP. Throws it in. A couple bodies collide. Nothing there. As Burns comes out of her crease to come get this one as it'll roll out. Yeah, I'm about to say, lets that one roll out for the goal kick. It's been an interesting pace to this game so far. You can tell both teams are, like, pushing it, but because of there's been so much back and forth between the teams, it hasn't really, like, the ball hasn't traveled nearly too far for the amount of hustle both teams are putting in. 
happens. It looks like it hit off a hand and it'll be a colonial ball. Fortunate break there as IEP was charging down the field. Yeah, and the Colonials here looking to get something going here. We're not too, too much time left here in the first half. They're going to definitely look to get something here as, like, for example, the, the men's team scored right before the half in their game to make it 1-1. I'm sure uh, the women's team here would love to do the same thing going into the half as an IUP player goes down, but no call there. Picked up by Hay, sends it up to Bailey. As that one rolls out again, and it looks like it'll be a throw in for the Colonials. We said that a lot in the men's game. Some of Garrett's favorite words was RMU throw in. And we've seen quite a few already in this game. Well, it is the nature of the sport, but uh, definitely they're definitely sticking to that left sideline right now, the far sideline from us. Another throw in from the Crimson Hawks. Battling for the ball, a couple players take the field. Our IUP charging down. This number two, Marissa Felina. Picked up there by Burns. She's going to hold on to that one. Yeah, they were trying to cross it in, but couldn't get really any uh, any mustard on it, so it just kind of rolled in on the goalkeeper. Decent opportunity, but goes by the wayside for the Crimson Hawks. IUP still gains possession here at midfield. Back and forth they go. Now picked up by the Colonials, number 16. Trying to hit it forward. A couple bodies collide there. IUP gets possession again. Good read there from number four, Pozniak. Send it in. Caldwell has a break here if she can get to it. She's got Baca going with her as well, but wasn't able to get onto the end of it. Still putting on some pressure, and it's going to force a colonial throw in deep into the IUP territory. It's a good play by Campbell. Just keep the pressure going. She was beat from the IUP player, but never gave up on the ball, and now it's going to be a throw in from that side of the field. Absolutely, and the colonials are going to look to make something happen here as this ball thrown in deep. Looks for Cantwell, kind of rolling away now, but it's the colonials on the ball once again. Pause Viak. Through the middle, tries to get her own pass, takes down a player with her along the way. So now a couple of bodies fall, and the referee's going to blow the play bit, play dead. Yeah, it took the ref a second to decide what he wanted to do with it, but eventually he makes the call, probably because it was the Colonials who was the benefit from that collision when it was originally the IUP ball. Cantwell staying down there, as IUP is going to kick this one away. Off the foot of number 25 in red, Gwen. RMU takes the ball right back off the foot of Sarah Baca. Got Mislin streaking down the left side here. Couldn't find her, though. Ball pops up. Gwynn tried to pop that one away. As Paws Viak just kicks that one out of play. It'll be a Crimson Hawks throw in from about midfield as substitutions for the Crimson Hawks come on. Much like the, uh, the full line change we saw from RMU uh, a little earlier in the half, it looks like most of the IUP bench is changing out here. They're all working their way through. One, two, three, four, five, six players on that bench. Yeah, they are really, uh, both sides really rolling the lines here today. IUP's throwing. Heavy pressure from the defenders trying to specifically go to one spot. That one's kicked in the air. Pause Viak working the line. Battling for the ball. Puts a nice little move on. Now she's going to get the throw in. Absolutely. Quite the, uh, quite the battle there as that one launched over to Sarah Baca. Right at the midfield line. Baca. Makes move around one. Makes another dancing move there. And Army's going to kick it right back in. Cantwell's Cantwell. on the end of it. Cantwell looking for Mislin on the left side. She hits her there. Ball bouncing around. IUP's going to get the ball right back, but Mislin's still on the charge. Yeah, they looked for the give and go there, Mislin and Cantwell. Almost got it to work, but wasn't able to fully execute. Pozviak finds Cantwell. Goes through the middle as they play catch there. Cantwell on the chase. And that one looks like it's going to roll out. And it's staying in for the in. moment, right on the baseline. It's a hard angle from us from right here. Yeah, I had to shift back behind uh, our second camera here trying to see what happened there. Through the middle, intercepted again by number 11, Bailey. Bailey pulling back, looking for somewhere to go. Bailey to her defender, Hay. Plays a back pass midfield to number 14. As now they work their way up their field. And she takes a tumble, and that's going to get called. Yeah, I'm about to say, that looked rough there for Julia Gleason, a freshman defender. Uh, still up and moving, though, but definitely not the wisest of tackles from the IUP side. And now the reinforcements now join the field. All six of them. Absolutely. Another uh, full bench change here for the Colonials as we are nearing down to, what is it, just north of 10 minutes to go in the first half, I believe. Yeah, just about. So far, very... 
It's a very even match. RMU sustaining pressure just like the men's team did last game in the later half of the first half. one nothing. Crimson Hawks, though, is the score. Yeah, absolutely. I think the only noticeable difference between the two teams so far has been the shots on goal. Um, while the Colonials have put on some sustained pressure, they haven't really had a ton of really dangerous chances on net, and that's uh, that's been the difference so far on why IUP has got this one nothing lead. A big shot there from the netminder rolls all the way down, picked up by the Colonials, intercepted by IUP, and they have a chance. Makes move around Hay. The shot. Oh, a what save. a stop! Off the hands and then off the base of the post from Burns. Just gonna send this one off to the side to be picked up by. Rio Strassneider makes a nice little move there and now whistle dead and it'll be IUP ball. Clip the wrist apparently. IUP is going to hold on to the ball here just past midfield. So they line up for the kick here. It'll be Abby Berthold, the captain. Could be a dangerous opportunity. Berthold shot goes towards out of the crease and battling for the ball, but a good keep there by the netminder Burns. Yeah, a lot of people charged in there. Burns kept her cool and was able to keep that one out of the net. Burns sends that one all the way to midfield, and now IUP has to backtrack to get this ball. On the chase is number 11 in blue, Emily Bailey. Bailey still battling for the ball here. She gets to the outside. Bailey works around another one, keeps going downfield. Bailey stops. Tries to backtrack as an IUP player gets taken down. Nothing there. Yeah, I would say less of taken down and more of ran into a brick wall that was Emily Bailey right there who stood her ground and just kind of shrugged her off as the Colonials are going to get their first corner of the game. It's going to be Megan McClemens trying to launch this one back in. RMU sending all but three enforcements up to the front of the cage to try to put this one home. Number 20, Hayes, working the outside. That one's kicked through, and IUP's just going to put that one right back. Colonial's still on the end of it, though. Might be able to make something happen here. Riley Milanovic was one of the enforcements coming back on the defensive side to keep that ball in play, but IUP's just going to have a goal kick here to regain possession. Yeah, not uh, not what you want to see from your, your first corner of the game, but if you're the Colonials, I'm sure you're going to get some more chances here before this one's all said and done. Goal kick here from Victoria Anderson. Finds its way all the way down to the Colonial Zone to number 23 in blue, Riley Milanovic. Milanovic moves over to McClements. Ball working the line again. IUP really hugging the left side of the ball is now into the brick wall of Milanovic. Was that IUP player? It's starting to become a running theme here. You, you can tell as this half's gone on, both teams starting to get a little more physical, a little chippier now that they've really started to feel out what each team can do, and they're starting to give less ground to each other than they had been at the start of the game. Colonial's on the counterattack here, and that's uh, number seven for RMU who finds its uh, finds their foot onto the end of the ball. Straw Snyder working through the middle, tried to get to the foot of Cantwell. And couldn't there. Strassnader still working for that ball. Just hounding the R or the IUP defender. Still on it. Wins the ball back. Surrounded now by two Crimson Hawks as Strassnader works her way down the corner. And it's a whistle. And it'll be, I believe, RMU ball. Yeah, absolutely. I, I tell you what, I didn't give it enough credit, but it's a little tough to tell the whistles uh, with the NCAA soccer game happening just to the right of us. Mm -hmm. Every so often I hear their whistle as well, and I'm trying to figure out exactly who it belongs to. Yeah. So McClymans gets that ball back. She has a shot, opportunity, oh. and save. Victoria Anderson gets that ball off McClymans' beautiful shot there, just off a rebound. Yeah, McClymans took a nice shot there, and it went off the shoulder of an IUP defender. It took a weird bounce. That's why it was such a high-arcing shot on net. Anderson able to get under it for IUP, and I think that's the first legitimate shot on goal that the Colonials have had so far today. Baca plays it back to McClymans. Baca still working for the ball. IUP is going to get possession, but also met there Strassnider. Picked up by number eight, Cantwell. Cantwell throws it down to Strassnader. Strassnader has people with her. Goes across, finds Baca. Over to Strassnader again to get that ball. It just dawned on me, I think uh, RMU has two number eights. I think they do as well. Because they also yeah. had an eight who was playing forward. Hmm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Phoenix Cannon, if I'm mistaken, on the defensive side. Oh. Yeah, then the Cantwell, the forward, and then... Uh, Phoenix Cannon, the defenseman. Both number eight. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to keep those separate for you folks. But, yeah, uh, on the fence here who just made that play, that is Phoenix Cannon, yep. the freshman. 
wearing one of the two number eights for the Colonials. Couldn't make him more confusing for us, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> RMU with a corner kick. Baca kicks it in. Good opportunity. Threw a couple of people there. IEP's trying to kick this one out. Into the play comes number 15 and number 20 there. Hay. Hay working to the outside. She has been all over the field in this first half for RMU. The confidence on the freshman as well, as we talked about last game, is the freshman come in here and they don't look out of place at all. No, they, they've really been taking it to each other. And that's for, that's for all teams here. I mean, you always got to find new members at the collegiate level because you don't, your time here is so short. Uh, and every year it's astounding how many they continue to find the, the fill in the holes in a, in a roster. And it'll be a goal kick for IUP. You approach under 10 minutes here. one nothing Crimson Hawks the score. Crimson Hawks will boot that one away. And we're uh, nearing just around seven minutes left in this first half here. Been a very interesting one thus far. one nothing, as we said in the last game, Mason Miller's goal for the men's team happened within the 10-minute mark as well. So let's see if RMU's women's team can follow up in the men's team earlier. Down the field they go are the Colonials. Ball bouncing around between both sides. RMU's going to get the possession back. Shot there is going to bounce right into the hands of Victoria Anderson. And IUP is going to get the stoppage they needed. Yeah, not a bad idea putting that one on net. You never know if the goaltender is going to be sleeping. We've seen that happen every so often, Caden, where, you know, one team gets a little too cozy in their own end before you know it, a long ball finds its way in. I'm, you know I'm going to reference this from the Tier 2 finals game against Duquesne where Caleb Morgan grabs the puck, fires it on net, and the goalie didn't even look like he was in his crease and just put it home and ended up being the game-winning goal. Yeah, it's, it's crazy what can happen sometimes if you're asleep at the switch. One who's not asleep at the switch right now, Julie Hay getting that one back up for the Colonials. Picked up by Straw Snyder. Hands it off to number eight, Phoenix Cannon, the defender, the other number eight. As IUP is going to let that ball roll out of bounds, and it'll be their ball about midfield with the throw it. Looks like IUP is making a full line substitution here. Looks like seven players taking the field. That's going to be most of the starting lineup for the, uh, the Crimson Hawks changing out. Everyone but one. There's one person on the bench left for the Crimson Hawks. That's, uh, that's pretty incredible. Looks like the Colonials might be thinking the same thing here. Looks like a whole host of people now getting up off the bench. So they'll wait probably until the next whistle to full sale substitution. More than likely. The throw in is IUP. Is going to let that one roll off. That should be Cologne, and it will not be. Yeah, I they were saying it, it went off of uh, yeah. Baca's foot there as McClemens pops that one up off her head. We saw a lot from the men's game that they like to use their head a lot, it seems, from both teams. It's I mean, you got to. Pass. It's the quickest way you can get to the ball when it's a high flyer like that. The Colonials now on the sh <laughs> streaking down the left wing, making one person miss, and now on the attack. Rio Straw Snyder working her way in, cuts to the middle, finds Baca, shot. Block there from IUP. Now the other way. IUP looking for people to come upfield. IUP sends it down. Good foot there from Jolie Hay again. Now to race for the ball. Leaving her creases burns, and she's going to pick that one up wisely. Yeah, good way to get that one out of trouble is she'll roll it right back into Phoenix Cannon. Who might I say is one of the coolest names I've ever heard I like in my that. life. That is a very <laughs> interesting name. I here comes IUP on the attack, streaking down their right wing here. It's a good keep from IUP just on the line. Julie Hay with the pressure, and they're going to say that bounces out. Really? I thought they kept that one in, but alas. And here comes the uh, the full change from the Colonials now. Another six relatively fresh legs taking yep. the field. At this point, I believe that probably every player who's eligible to compete today on both teams has stepped foot on the pitch. But As the reinforcements come on, as Julie Hay, one of the people that looks like making her way off the field. As it'll be number four in blue, uh, Maya Pozviak is going to kick this one away for the Colonials. Yeah, free kick from deep in their own corner. Pozviak booms this one towards midfield, picked up by IUP. On the pressure is McClymans. Bouncing ball, IUP picks it up again. Yeah, it was hunted down briefly by Jocelyn Hansen. Uh, not able to get onto the end of it, though, as that ball has found its way off to the far sideline. it would be an RMU throw in, I believe. It's down there is a couple Colonials, including number 24 in blue, Jocelyn Hansen. IUP trying to stretch the field out. 
Paws VX sends it forward, finds McClemens. McClemens trying to work to the outside, gets body sweeps possession of the ball. Hands off to Schrossneider. Working outside again, Schrossneider. This could be a critical possession here for the Colonials. Probably about three or so minutes left in regu or in scheduled time here in the first half, not to mention any stoppage times the referee might add on. But not too much time left. Is that going to be an offsides? And clearly so. I mean, yeah, just probably a little by about, bit ahead. <laughs> probably by about, mm, I don't know, three yards or so. Not a hard call there for the line judge. Imagine if that was onside, she was gone, though. There was not a defender in sight. No, not in the slightest. But... That is why there was not a defender in sight, because they were not on sides. <laughs> this pause Viak quickly ties her shoes here. We reached the two-minute mark to go. one nothing IUP. So the crowd erupts to the right of us, as I believe RMU men's team might have uh, either won or scored. I believe it might be the latter, given the, the time it might be. That might have been a, a late winner there for the NCAA men's team in their Horizon League opener today, because uh, the entire Colonial bench just, like, charged the field. <laughs> So congrats to the men's team on both the club and the NCAA side for winning their matches today. Or assuming they won. I don't assuming, know the score of that one, <laughs> Something fun happened over yeah. there. Meanwhile, back in the, our regularly scheduled programming here, it's McClemens chasing it down, and then Mislin chasing it to the far sideline. As it works its way out of bounds, and I believe this will be an IUP throw in. And it will be. Predictions aren't always accurate, Alex, but I think we got that one right. Yeah. As IUP will throw that one back in. Right around midfield here, trying to make something happen as the clock's winding down here. Chance there, uh, but Colonial's able to get back in time. Pozviak working outside. Keeps possession of the ball, trying to just put it outside. And that ball is going to be kicked away. I think they're going to call Pozviak for that, and it'll be IUP ball still. Yeah, it's going to be a free kick here for the Crimson Hawks. Uh, I don't necessarily see too much wrong. It was just a physical battle for sure, but, you know, that's why I'm not paid to be the referee. Yeah. As will be number 10 in red to put this one away. Abby Berthold, the captain, is going to take this kick. This is a dangerous position for the Crimson Hawks to be in, too. They might be able to make it 2 nothing right here with this free kick. Berthold shot. Tried to go for the header off number 2 in red. Marissa Frohina. And that one's going to work its way all the way out of bounds. Yeah, dangerous opportunity there for Frohina. Just could not get her head onto the end of that ball. And... Before you know it, that one's back out of play once again, but definitely a quality chance there for the Crimson Hawks. Approaching under 30 seconds in regulation time for the first half here, depending on the referee's scheduled time going on. It's now Pozviak through the middle of the field. I believe we have now hit the stoppage time for the first half as the Colonials might have one more chance to charge up the field. Here's Pozviak. Pozviak, the head of steam here. Pokes it forward, tries to get her own rebound. IEP is going to pick that up. As play continues on. A little Pause. serpentine defense. That one's launched up over some cars, and that's going to roll down the hill toward the on-campus apartments. As they're going to blow it dead there, and that's going to do it for the first half. IUP is leading one nothing, but RMU on the doorstep there getting some pressure, and let's see what they can do in the second half. Yeah, they definitely had some quality chances uh, for sure. Nothing necessarily dangerous on net, but they had periods of sustained pressure, which is what you're going to need in the second half in order to really – really make it happen and tie this one up if you're the Colonials. And if you're IUP, you just got to keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you've already got the lead, and you've done a pretty good job managing the game thus far. So IUP up one nothing here going into the second half. We'll be right back after this for the second half. Welcome back to the second half of the IUP Crimson Hawks and the Robert Morris University Colonials. We have a new color commentator to the side of me, Emily Carey. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you, Caden. It's good to be here. Soccer match up here. Two, or it's one nothing IUP at the moment. Just from watching the first half so far, what, what have you seen from RMU that you've liked? I've seen some really good plays. Uh, one of the players, I think number 10, one of the captains, was really making some good calls out there. Um, I also saw another player. I don't see her out there right now. She was a defense. Oh, wait, no, there she is, number eight, um, Phoenix Cannon. She did a really good play with the two-on-one and really got past the defense on IUP. As balls kicked off here, IUP starting off here. RMU with a little bit of aggression to get things going from Maya Posviak. That one sent down the length of the field in RMU. 
trying to get going here. IUP sends it back again. A good headshot there from, I believe that was Baca. Or I'm sorry, number 20, Julie Hay. Towards the net and diving down is Maddie Burns to cover that one up as IUP was swarming around her crease. That was a good catch. Burns skies this one towards the sideline. Good header play there from number seven, Schrossnyder. Schrossnyder on the move now. Schrossnyder trying to go along the line here. IUP trying to play keep away. Schrossnyder using her body to get forward. Is that one sent toward the RMU bench? And I believe it'll be an RMU throw in. It looks like it'll be number seven, Schrossnyder, on the throw. Tries to go towards the captain, McClemens. Back across the line, and it rolls out, and IUP will get the ball right back. They're really trying their best out there. As IUP sends that one in. Back to the defensive zone, trying to get something going here. Pressuring hard here is Pozviak. IUP moving up the field here. Oh, IUP with a good move right there. Going towards the ball is number 11 in blue, Bailey. Ball towards midfield. Play blown dead as an IUP player takes a tumble and is still maintain IUP ball as RMU. Guilty party there. It'll be a kick outside of midfield. As they look to send this one away, it'll be the captain, Abby Bethold, the defender. As Berthold sends this one off. My goodness, that's a rocket. Berthold. As out of a crease comes Burns, IUP with a chance. RMU's defense locking down and just getting that ball away is a misplay by Burns. Fortunate for the Colonials to keep that one away. Pozviak hard on the pressure, trying to get this ball back. IUP says they kicked it off of Pozviak, and that'll be the case as it keeps their ball. I think that IUP player is Liberty, one of the captains, maybe? If I'm not mistaken, possibly. She is a captain. As towards IUP, working their way through, trying to cross kick there. Back on defense is Julie Hay. Hay, one of the freshmen mentioned in the first half, who's had a solid first game here in a colonial uniform. IUP still maintaining possession here. Through the middle. Hay on the attack to get this ball back. Sends it towards the line, tried to go for Cantwell. Couldn't hit there. Towards the net. Burns is just going to hold that one as three IUP players are right around. Burns has been really good about getting the ball when IUP is pushing her. Ball sent towards the sideline to Strassnyder. Strassnyder cross kick. Tries to get towards him McClemens. McClemens working her way upfield. Tried to put it around number 10, Berthold. McClemens Ooh. takes a tumble. No call there. I'm surprised by the no call. She really fell hard. Berthold working her way around as it gets a little bit more aggressive here in the second half. IUP storming up the field now. Amanda Gwynn. Gwynn coming up, looking to try to go for the crosser. Has a good diving play nice. there from RMU's defense to take that away. And then a slide tackle to put that one out, and it's just not going to be in time. As it'll still be IUP's ball as two slide tackles try to keep that ball in play. And that... This will be number 26 in red, Rachel Gwynn. Rachel Gwynn's going to throw this one in. Gwynn. I believe it might actually be a corner kick here. Gwynn. Hand up. Here we go. Gwynn shot. Knocked away from a couple Colonials, and it's going to be behind the net. And it'll be a goal kick for Maddie Burns. So they wait for the crease to clear. Maddie Burns looking for somewhere to go. Burns going to set up on the left side of her crease here. Burns sails this one towards midfield. Wow. McClemens tried to call you that down. Cantwell sends it deep, and now it's a race for the ball. Strassnyder trying to get ahead. A good play by IUP's defense to knock that away, and it's going to make its way out of bounds. IUP shut down defense, prevented Strassnyder from getting anywhere near that ball. The netminder, Victoria Anderson, will set things up, leave it for the captain, Berthold, to kick this one away. Both with very strong legs, Berthold walks away and gives it to the goalkeeper. Anderson sends this one off. McClemens right there, along with Strassnyder on the chase. 
Also down to number 11, Bailey. Ball pouncing up, Cantwell. Army being really aggressive right now. Just trying to keep it in IUP's area. It's a good header right there from 21 and below. Ball bouncing towards and out of play it goes. It'll be an RMU throw it. Tried to go towards the Captain McClemens. Back towards Cantwell. Cantwell back to 21 and blue. Tried to get through to Cantwell. Pass misses and now IUP's coming the other way. It's a good play there from Julie Hay once again right there on the money. Going towards. All the way down and play is blown dead. As Julie Hay regains the ball, and I believe it'll be Colonial Possession. So they throw the ball all the way towards midfield. Was that for offsides? I believe so. As IUP sets the ball, Hay is going to settle it down. It's nice to see that everyone's still being a team player out here. There's a couple players. As the, it looks like the netminder... Maddie Burns is going to kick this one away. Hay is going to stay behind just in case anything happens. Burns with the kick. Tries to go to Cantwell. Finds over to number 11 in blue. Emily Bailey makes nice a move around defense. one. Bailey tries to go for Cantwell. She tries to get there just out of her reach. And IUP is going to have a goal kick. Anderson, the netminder, is going to hold this one down. Also down there is Berthold. IUP with the kickoff. Kick towards midfield. Try to knock it down. Good play there. As the ball's oh. kicked up towards us. And, and Alex trying to save us. He unnecessary superhero right there, Alex. Our production <laughs> director making sure that none of our equipment is going down today. <laughs> There's a couple close calls, and I said, uh-uh, not today. We're not doing this. There's number 11, Emily Bailey kicks us away. She finds number 12. The captain, Megan McClemens, as number 10, Berthold, falls to the ground and plays whistle dead. The stoppage of play here is IUP regains their six, seven subs coming onto the field. My goodness, they do they are they consistently switching out the whole line? Yeah, it's it been does, this way yeah, pretty much does, the whole yeah, game yeah, for both sides. Way. Usually in regular, in uh, professional soccer, you only get about three or four subs a game. So for some of these people, you have to play the whole 90 minutes, which is wow. incredible stamina. You even see some of the players, like even Megan McClemens from RMU. She's only been off the field, I think, one time. Wow. As a captain, senior, she has the stamina build up, and it's crazy. I, c I can never do that, honestly. I could never either. I mean, you bust your butt for 90 minutes straight with one or two breaks, if that. Like that that's incredible. Exactly. RMU tried to sail that one away. IUP with a good chance. Cantwell's going to settle that one down. She's going to try to go for Bailey. Pass. Bailey on the chase. IUP's just going to get forward. Bailey's trying to get around with the edge. Bailey's catching up. Is she going to get it out of bounds? It's Bailey, good oh. back kick, falls to the ground. Nothing there. Try to go toward the RMU sideline as IUP awaits the ball. It's number two in red. Marissa Ferlina picks that one up, sends it down. IUP with speed, try to go for the crosser, sails behind the net. A good opportunity for the Crimson Hawks. The Colonials. Keep it a one nothing game. As now RMU's turn to switch out six players. As now six players for them work their way onto the field. Some substitutes include Clantwell making her way off and the captain, Megan McClemens, going off for her second time of the game. And uh, the new substitutions on, including Sarah Baca, the it captain. It also looks like we are approaching our 30-minute mark, which means we're about 10 minutes into this, and RMU is still putting up a good show right now, just trying to get that one point to get it to be tied. Ball bounces out of play. Looks like it's going to be an IUP throw-in from their sideline, where their bench is, possibly, as also uh, Maya Posviak working her way down there for RMU, possibly throw-in, but it owned up on the hands of Mar Marissa Ferlina, number two in red. The throw in. Bounces off the head of an IUP player, and that's a lucky break for the Colonials as that bounces out. Now, do you think that it's better to have the ball go out or to try to keep it in play? In that scenario, for IUP, it was a mistake on their end. They just mishandled the ball, so as an army player, you want that to go out because you automatically gain possession mm -hmm. from there and you can set up the way you want. So that's what they did there. They set up the ball, just didn't uh, fulfill 
The promise is there as now RMU storming up the field off the foot of Sarah Baca. I'm sorry, number 20. It's, like it's going up Julie to number Hay. 5. And now on the chase is number 5. Is IUP oh. settles that ball down. Miranda Shock was on the chase there. Got two on one here. Two players for RMU battling for the ball. Number 11, Emily Bailey, slide tackle. RMU keeps control. That's a good play. So that one has sailed past everyone down into the colonial zone where Julie Hay is going to stop and pick that one up. IUP still applying pressure. IUP has been all gas, no breaks so far this game as now the Colonials will regain possession of the ball. I still have hope that RMU is going to be able to get this goal. I mean, we saw it with the men's team earlier today. They were down one point, and then they were able to bring up two points in the second half. The throw in. Off ahead. Towards midfield. As a couple players collide there, nothing to be called from the referee's eyes. Now back from number 20, Julie Hayes. Sails it towards midfield. Off ahead, and now the chase is on. Number five, Grace, catching up. Shock moves it forward. Working her way downfield, stops, looks for the crosser. Finds number 11, Bailey. Working her way towards the middle of the field. Bailey, shot, <gasps> save there. Mm. Victoria Anderson read that one perfectly, and RMU has their first chance of the second half there. Anderson punts this one away. Number 14 in blue, there to pick it up, Julie Gleason. Number 24, Jocelyn Hansen is really trying to keep it in. Hansen moves it over to number four. Pause Viac. Shot sails just wider than that minder. RMU with a couple good chances here, but nothing to put in the back of the net, and it's still one nothing IUP. As long as they keep trying, I have faith that they're going to be able to get it in, Caden. Hey, that's the going eventually, right? 100% of the shots you don't take don't go in. Exactly. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. <laughs> As number 10 for IUP, Berthold sails it away. Up in the air for Milanovic. As now IUP has people going the other way. Milanovic trying to get back here. IUP working the outside. Julie Hay runs right into it and knocks the ball away. Julie Hay has not oh stopped all game. How is that not a yellow card? A lot of collisions. Hey, some collisions are legal, just like in hockey. You, you know a thing or two about hockey collisions, don't you, Emily? I do know a thing or two about hockey collisions. <laughs> As now picked up by Maddie Burns to punt this one away. Burns in the air, sailed towards midfield, bouncing over a couple IUP players. Picked up by number two in red, Felina. Felina battling hard with 24. And Hansen, now in the zone IUP. Working to the outside. Good pressure there from 14 and blue. Gleason still working to the outside. Running it down now. RMU. Gleason pushes her out of bounds. I think that's going to stay IUP ball. Everyone is just bringing the energy to the field today. No one is soft. It just everyone's given 110% today. Every game matters, especially when it comes down to tournaments at the end of the season and everything. They look at games like this. Your goal differentials, how many goals you scored. Every game matters. Also, there's only seven games the whole season, so you got to do your best. You got, and you only have three at home too. I mean, you have home crowd. There's a de there's a very good crowd here, just like at the men's game earlier. Mm -hmm. To have your home support there as well, I mean, that's a big advantage for some teams, especially a team like RMU, as it worked in the men's game as well. But for three home games, you got to take advantage of this. And mm -hmm. the Colonials keeping it one score is definitely doable right now for them to get back in this game. As on the other way come the Colonials. Pass through, tries to go for number four, Kosviak, as it sails just wide. Hansen was working her way through the middle. Or Gle <coughs> excuse me, Hansen worked her way through the middle, tried to go for the pass, just out of reach. IUP keeping the momentum going. Emily Bailey was really trying to get that ball through mid and really did a good job. Ball goes back and forth. IUP running it down. Has numbers coming the other way. Back to get it at number 15. Shot. Oh, missed wide. A good opportunity for the Crimson Hawks. Sales just wide again. Back and forth they go between the Crimson Hawks and the Colonials. And now a goal kick will ensue here from Matty Burns. Burns sails this one off towards the side as IEP won to let that one bounce. 
And now picked up off the foot of Miranda Shock. Is that one played out of bounds now? It'll be a throw in for the Colonials. Off the hands of number 11 in blue. Back to the defensive side, kicked up. Ball still bouncing around here. A good foot and the ball bounces out again. Another throw in for the Colonials. Emily Bailey really did a good job of making sure she wasn't the one that went out of bounds with that one. Even with the two IUP players really focusing her. Shock sends it over. Picked up by Bailey. Bailey with a head of steam working her way down. She has an IUP player back behind her. Bailey stops. Makes a nice move. Works to the outside. Bailey still working with it here. Bailey, cross Ooh. kick. Looks like it was out. Nothing called. Now it is. They let the play go on for a second, but Emily Bailey has a step outside, and it'll be IUP's ball. It must have been real close. She must have been millimeters over that line. Barely, it looked like. So now substitutions ensue for IUP. Victoria Anderson going to kick it off. We've seen a huge leg from Anderson so it's far today. Yeah. It's one thing that you really need as a goaltender is you need to be able to get that ball up in the air and out of your own zone. So that one's and kicked. you have to make sure you're accurate, too. If you're not accurate, it's all for naught. Shock battling for the ball. Also to come in is 24 Gleese, or I'm sorry, Hansen, who shakes off a body. Now a chance the for the Colonials. It's Mislin. Mislin pulls back. IUP takes the ball right back from Mislin. Coming into the play is 23 in blue. IUP picks it up again. Gleason. Hansen down there as well. Coming the other way is the Colonial shot taken away from the IUP from IUP on the defensive play with the head. Back towards midfield. I don't know if any of our 32 viewers at home can hear, but there's a lot of good communication going on between these teams. Shock sends it around. Battling for the ball. IUP working to the outside. Nice little play there to move in and get that ball away towards midfield. IUP picks it up and sends it the whole length of the field, out of bounds it goes. It'll be a throw in for the Colonials off of the hands of Riley Milanovic. And we're about two minutes away from our 20 minute mark. That's a big deal since that's halfway through the second um, half. 20 Let's minutes of uh, regulation time then. Sometimes they add in a couple extra minutes at the end there. We either the official have, times. I think we have four, five substitutes, four? Five, Four, five. No, five, five. Number 20, um, Julie uh, Hett is going out today, or for this time. Or are you on the throw in? Two IUP players are right there, battling for the ball. Hansen's going to come out with it. Hansen working her way through the middle, still met by a couple IUP defenders. Ball battling through Cantwell, joins the battle as well. Bouncing through. Sent down the length of the field was Hans, and now on the chase is McClements. IUP just trying to get the outside. McClements meets her right there. McClements still holding on to it. Back to number six, Bella Munavedo. Coming through is Cantwell. Cantwell with a shot opportunity. Cantwell pulls back, just couldn't get it off. Cantwell's been really aggressive this game, really just trying to get the ball and get it as close to the goal as possible. Trying to play off to the side, finds the foot of Straw Snyder. Strauss under working way forward as IUP works the outside and works and goes down the sideline towards the IUP bench. Number eight going in with speed, IUP. And that ball is going to roll its way out, and it's going to be RMU's. The fortunate break is number 25 in red. Amanda Gwynn was just going with the ball. Toward the sideline, IUP picks it up. Sends it down, burns out of her crease to come get it, and stops that one. As Burns punts this one away. McClemens is right there and stops it. Ball rolls back in the defensive zone. IUP is going to take advantage and picks that one up and sends it the length of the field. Down the chase hit is number eight, Phoenix Cannon. Sends it over to 15 in blue. The ball bounces around a couple times. Out of play it goes. IUP will have the throw in towards their bench. There's another 
delayed penalties here as RMU, guilty party, I believe. IP is going to pick this, or I'm sorry, RMU's ball for a goal kick. Off the foot of Matty Barnes. Sends it, tries to go for McClements. Bouncing ball here. IUP sends it towards the other end of the field. Out of play it goes. RMU will have a throw in or a goal kick. Off the hands of Aiden Blue. Phoenix Cannon. It'll end up being a goal kick for Matty Burns. Burns winding up, looking for an open player. Tries to send toward the left side to the foot of seven and blue straw Snyder. Good hand or head there. McClemon. Back to Straw Snyder. Trying to work her way around. Pulls back. Straw Snyder. Back to the defensive partner there. Straw Snyder. Still has it. Towards the middle of the field. Goes to Bonavito. Intercepted there by number ten in red. Abby Berthold. Along the side picked up now from the Colonials again. Is that ball's going to go out of play into the IUP bench for another stoppage? Is there anyone you think we should be keeping an eye on in this second half, Caden? It's definitely got to be the senior captains. I mean, Megan McClemens has had a couple chances, it looks like, already, and then Emma Cantwell, the best chance of the game, just couldn't pull the trigger. I think both of them are definitely two key factors going forward. Is that ball sales not an opportunity for RMU? IUP just a step ahead there as they try to get this one out. Settling it down. Intercepted there by Straw Snyder. She's going to carry it up. No one near. She has all day to make a move. Straw Snyder through. Straw Snyder with a great pass. Tried to go for the Mislin there. Mislin lets that one go out, and it'll be an IUP goal kick. Another good opportunity for the Colonials. Just couldn't pull it off. The kick here from Victoria Anderson. Anderson moving the players around and fires this one off. Taken away by McClemens. Ball bouncing in RMU's favor. Mislin down there as well. McClemens joining the rush. As that one sails towards the sideline as RMU is looking to let that one go out, and it does. Cantwell with a throw in. Gives the move. Tried to go to McClemens. Cannon. Plays it up. Tries to go to McClemens. Sails that one wide. Tried to go for Cantwell. Cantwell sends it over to the side. No one home is now 21 and blue as they run this one down. IUP just lets that one smartly go as they can just throw this one in. IUP's throw in. Tries to go towards midfield. Oh. Sailed out and hits the Jeep. That's what my car used to be. Yeah, Alex's car was there. Now it's not. So no damage to that. We're really happy for Alex's car right now, um, and we are sending our blessings to it. Well, we don't know where it is, but it's not here. It's down there. Okay. As the ball is still bouncing around the defensive side, trying to get this one out is Hansen. Hansen through the middle. Leaves it through. Cantwell has to come up and get the ball. Cantwell also up there with McClemens. Bouncing ball goes to Straw Snyder. Straw Snyder working her way down as substitutions get ready for the Colonials. Straw Snyder tried to bounce it off an IUP player. Doesn't go her way. Ball bounces towards midfield. As number eight in blue, Phoenix Cannon goes back to retrieve it. We are switching out six players. The whole bench. Whole bench is up and going. In. We love to see it. The whole bench moving. RMU now has about 15 minutes plus um, any pause time that might be added to try to level the playing field right now. They've really been keeping uh, the Hawks from getting their second goal and are really just giving it their all in this very on this very nice day. It was a very nice day. It was cloudy earlier. Now the sun's starting to come out a little bit. Weather's pretty nice. Yeah, I would not say it is incredibly hot out here. I know we have some fans and uh, people watching from Colorado. I don't know how the weather is over there, but I'd actually love to go to Colorado. That seems like a very nice place. Seems very hot. Colorado? Yeah, Colorado. Not in the winter. It's all mountains. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong Colorado. You mean the one in central USA? Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not a warm place, I don't think. 
as we hit under the 15 minute mark to go here, uh, excluding any bonus time added on from the referees. McClemens on the chase. Work toward midfield, IUP picks it up. Off the foot here. There's a couple Army players right there as IUP has a break going the other way. Around the horn it goes. It's Abby Kinney battling for the ball still. It pushes this one out and in out of play it goes. But Abby Kinney putting on a show defensively there to keep that ball away from the IUP forwards. It'll be a throw in, I believe, from IUP. Record breaking heat wave today in Colorado. Yeah, Ooh. not today. <laughs> I, I told you it'd be hot. Not, he said not today. Oh, he said not today. No. Colorado not is today. not a very hot place. As that ball bounces its way towards the sideline, as IUP is going to pick that one up. RMU now has possession the other way. It's number 20 in blue. Working way up, Jolie Hay. Sends it forward on the chase. Goes number seven, Strassnyder. Trying to get there before the ball goes out of bounds. Strassnyder. Working around. Back it goes. Shot opportunity. Oh, Save I there from the netminder, Anderson. I had so much hope for that one. Anderson holding the ball here, looking for somewhere to go. Kicks this one off. Oh, goodness. Gets that one right on the midfield line. Now IUP has two people going the other way. Oh, no. Looks it's like two on O. Oh. They're going to call him offsides. An unfortunate break for the Colonials. It's the only person back in a reasonable range was Pozviak. But RMU now getting possession of the ball. Looks like we're having a dance party up on the production side of things. Um, we will eventually be getting a broadcaster camp so that you guys can see our beautiful faces. Or if you go back and watch our Goat 4v4 stuff, we did use a little bit of the broadcaster camp. Okay. Is that I was unaware. Goat 4v4, yeah. Okay. A little bit of a summer hockey league action summer, that we summer got to do. Summer hockey league, okay, okay, okay. Made some nice friends along the way. Watched some guys like... Uh, any hockey fans out there, JT Miller, Vinny Trocek, third third overall pick Logan Coley, the Arizona Coyotes was in that as well. A ton of talented players, a ton of great friends that we made along the way, and can't wait for it next year. That one ball is sailed away. RMU battling for it. IUP has two people on the ball, so they try to get this one out. Number six is really trying to keep that ball. Amanda Gwynn on her horse again. It's been an absolute bullet train this whole game for IUP. Gwynn, still grinding to gain possession for the Crimson Hawks, and that ball is going to be waved out, I believe, in possession of the Colonials. They have such colorful flags. I think I need one. They're very nice flags. It kind of it kind of reminds me of kind of the NASCAR flags, just more colorful. Exactly, you know? exactly. Come on, NASCAR, get better flags. <laughs> this will be a corner kick for IUP. <laughs> Hand up, balls away. On the ground. RMU takes advantage of that one. Oh, it's a good block there. She wasn't expecting it was number six in blue, Bella Bonavito, but she took the block and a very beneficial block for the Colonials. Now Megan McClemens. Looks like she's going to pass. McClemens is going to take it herself. McClemens looking for somewhere to go. Pulls up, tries to go through the middle. Good block from the Crimson Hawks there. The diving effort. Uh-oh. As now back is the Colonials just trying to get out of trouble. Bailey sends it back to 21 in blue. She Big sends kick. it. As that one sails past one of the IUP players, but another defender right behind her to get it. Three on three in the offensive zone. A shock battling for the ball along the line. As that ball rolls out, out, that's going to be IUP's possession. They're going to throw this one in. Towards midfield right there to take it. Good read by Abby Kenny. Sails that one away. Off the head of one of the... IUP defender, Strassnyder's going to pick up the loose ball. Strassnyder goes low. Tries to find Jolie Hay. Couldn't connect on the pass there. As that ball goes rolling away. Capped alive there by the RMU defense. McClemens tried to keep that one down. RMU sends it. Picks that one up midfield. Now a chance for Emily Bailey. Bailey with the <gasps> shot sails just oh, wide. Oh, man. We're so close every time. Emily Bailey had one player pressuring her, took the shot opportunity, and just goes a little bit off to the right. RMU still getting a couple of chances here, but nothing crazy. 
Victoria Anderson here to kick this one off away. Taking her time here, some substitutions still get on the field here for both the Colonials and the Crimson Hawks. Anderson with the okay to get going. And here we go. Anderson. McClemens heads that one down, balls up in the air. Bailey goes for it. Crimson Hawk player gets taken down. Straw Snyder battling for it. Bailey and McClemens is there as well. On the chase. IUP sends it out. RMU trying to keep Good this one defense. alive. It's now a chance the other way. It's 17 in red. Here. It's a one on one. She's going though. She's fast. The opportunity as a play there. As I believe that was number four, Maya. Pause the act. Laid out on the field. Is she doing okay? She's up and moving. That's a good sign. That was a, a rough little play there. And she got the shot off. But Maddie Burns with the save. Straw Snyder moves over to Bailey. Bailey looking for somewhere to go. Pulling back is Bailey. Back over to five and blue. Genoway. Looking for open space. Intercepted again. <laughs> IUP She's has another opportunity. It. As now a diving effort oh. there. She gets taken is she down. Okay? A little slow to get up. With 17 in red. Now a couple players come over to comfort her. They're going to blow the whistle dead here. It looked like the RMU player accidentally landed on her with a slide tackle. Looks like she, they're getting the coach out now. Yeah, the referees. Maybe just got the wind blown out of her. Or looks like RMU subbing. Six players again, whole bench. Slow to get up, but she's getting off on her own power, and that's what we like to see. She's going to exit the game. Good sportsmanship from all sides around as she makes her way off the field. Two great opportunities for her, and just just a little shy of getting the a goal there. Oh, but she she's okay, and that's all that matters for right now. It's now back to the field we go. It'll be a goal kick here for the Colonials off the foot of Maddie Burns. Kicked away towards the sideline. Trying to get it there was Bailey. Straw Snyder fighting for it. Going around is IUP. Good kick there from 25 and blue, Abby Kinney. Fighting for it is Riley Milanovic. Milanovic with the pressure. Back towards the line and kicked away there by Phoenix Cannon. Defensive RMU playing lockdown, but with time hitting about the 10 minute mark. RMU got to get some offense going here. One nothing IUP the score. It looks like we're reaching almost our last five minutes of play wow. here. That, that, that fifteen minutes went by really fast. Yes, it did. IUP shot kicked away by Milanovic. Down to get it as well, down there as well is Jocelyn Hansen. Bouncing ball around. RMU's going to gain possession. It's twenty in blue. Julie Hay. Still bouncing around 26 and Red picks it up, Rachel Gwynn. The Gwynn sisters, Amanda and Rachel, have been all over the field for the IUP so far. This will be a throw in here for the Crimson Hawks, I believe. Or I'm sorry, the Colonials around midfield. Kicked away, Colonials trying to get something going here. Reaching our last six minutes of play here. It's going to get serious. RMU's got a Intensity is gonna wrap. It's gonna ramp up here, I think, Emily. Hopefully, we prevent any injuries, though. So even that too. though we're getting more aggressive, we keep it calm, cool, and collected. Keep it clean. Keep I, aggressive, just keep it clean. I am surprised there's not more concussions in soccer due to having to hit the ball with your head. That too. Uh, I think it's just one of those things you kind of learn not where to hit the the ball with your head. That's I mean, always been a wonder to me how that works. There's a ton of concussions. I just think. Well, it's not. It's pretty common, I still think. As RMU gains possession here, Maya Pozviak sends it forward. On the chase is Emily Bailey. Bailey got a step here. One person behind Bailey. IUP walking it in. falling behind. Bailey. Shot opportunity. Fires oh, just over the pie. net. That's a great opportunity there, but just over the net. At least they have the opportunity to try and keep it in IUP's end right now. It'll be a goal kick for the Crimson Hawks. Is Bailey beating herself up a little bit over that one. Just over top of the goal post. The kick away here from Abby Berthold. 
through midfield. Down Army. to play it in is 25. Keeping it in. Ball still bouncing around here. Works their way down the sideline. Now it's a race for the ball. Milanovic one on down one. for RMU. Also down there is number 15 in blue. Looks like RMU gets the ball. or Nope, keeper gets the ball. It's out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick from Maddie Burns. Burns waiting for someone to be open. Goes along the sideline. Tries to go for McClement. Is that ball is going to rule out? I believe it's going to be an IEP throw it. You have less it's than four minutes. Come on, Armu, you got it. Ball bats bouncing around towards the IEP sideline. They're going to award that one to IEP as well with a throw it. IEP just killing off the clock slowly. A good overall team effort to not let RMU into their own zone. Milanovic on the case, kicks that one out. IEP is going to have another throw in opportunity from the other side of the field. Towards the bench area, the throw in. RMU battling for it. Now they gain possession of the ball. Up the field, a good pullback there by Shock. Goes wide. As the player <gasps> goes down, yeah. then that's gonna be that's gonna be called. I think that was Phoenix Cannon with just a little bit of a, a move there, and the IUP player goes down. They're gonna call that every time. Looks like she's staying in, looks like she's doing okay. About three minutes to go here in regulation time as the IUP is going to kick this one away. Looks like Armu's getting their subs ready to come in. Looks like there's about three of them. Last second substitutions here. Bailey knocks that one down. Retreats back in her own zone, looks for somewhere to go. Tries to go for Abby Kinney. Ball bouncing. Kinney trying to go around. She gets the ball there, and she has someone going the other way. Tries to cross field to McClemens. Couldn't get through. IUP. Number 11's coming up. Stretching the field. Bailey knocks that away. Bailey looking for someone to go along the field, and it'll be IUP ball with a throw in in their own defensive zone. Everyone's looking a little bit tired right now as we're reaching these last few minutes. RME with a couple substitutions here before the end of the game, just to get some fresh body. About two minutes to go here in regulation time. So we wait for a couple more players to join the play. IUP is going to throw this one in. Right there is number four in blue. Pozviak on the pressure. Also there, a good block there. A little shaken up as Buenavito, but she took that one yeah, uh, and prevented another opportunity for the Crimson Ox. That looked like that hurt. <laughs> Definitely a little painful for sure. Watch out, incoming. So that ball's going to sail into the stands. And then it'll be an IEP throw it. Alex's job is to protect the equipment, and in that case, he, he did his job and then came nowhere close to it. The ball still bouncing around Buenavito with the pressure. Back to Berthold. Pressured hard there by Bailey. Ball still at midfield. IUP trying to backtrack. Game possession RMU going all forces go here. Along the sidelines. IUP working it down. Looking for a cross. Oh no. Block there. Another opportunity. Shot save there by Burns. There you go, Burns. RMU now, has to ramp things up here. Reaching our last minute here, and maybe the rest have some extra time they included, but it's it's looking like IUP's won this one. McClements. Also down there, Buenavito. Towards midfield, IUP regains possession. Around the outside. Picked up by ba here in 21 in blue. Strassnader goes to the side. That one's played towards midfield. IUP picks it up against Berthold, just trying to get the ball out. RMU looking for about one more chance just to get something going here. Come on, RMU. Back pass here. Going to get that ball is Hansen. Hansen looking for somewhere. Back pass to Kinney. Kinney sails it toward the side, and that's going to go right towards our camera. <laughs> and IUP is going to get a throw in opportunity. As she tried to go there, I believe, for my Maya Pozbiak. IEP with a throw in right in front of our camera. Looks like we've reached the end of regulatory time. This is all uh, time the rest added on for pauses. And the throw in. Toward the side, Pozviak. Bodied away. Looks like that's the and end that's of the game. That's going to do it. IUP won this one, but Army's going to come back and 
Hit harder than ever next time. Tomorrow, actually. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow they're going to come back and hit harder than ever. Tomorrow versus Duquesne, so another divisional matchup is Duquesne at 3 p.m. Same place, same time. Yeah. Same channel as well. But IUP comes out victorious on this one, one to nothing. A very close back and forth game it was, Emily. And for the women's team, I don't think there's anything to really ha hang your hat on. No, I really think that RMU and IUP both gave it everything that they could, and they both tried the hardest that they could, and they put everything out on the field, blood, sweat, and tears. For MVP for the Colonial side, who, who do you got? Who's your favorite I'd have today? to say it would be the goalie, uh, Maddie Burns. Yep. She really, I felt like, made a lot of good plays, and she really had some long kicks to get it out of the zone. For me, I'm, I'm going to go a little off the board. I'm going to say Julie Hay, one of the defenders. I mean, for a freshman, she was all over the field. She hustled very well. She moved the ball very well. She was mm -hmm. boxing her defensive plays very well. And for a freshman, that's all you can expect. Exactly. You know I mean? If you're not on, if you don't get on the score sheet, it doesn't matter. But if you're on playing defense and preventing goals, I mean, that's all you could do. Exactly. But for Jolie Hay, she played her job perfectly, and I'm, I'm going to give her my player of the game. As you should. So tomorrow, 3 p.m., women's soccer is back again here at the North Athletic Complex against the Duquesne Dukes. It's 3 o'clock tomorrow, same place, same channel. We'll see you next time.